what is going on guys welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video today is the last video we're going to do on the mercedes cla the infamous price breakdown now if you're new to the channel and you like what you see don't forget to hit that subscribe button give the video a like um, it's much appreciated and we are on instagram at car trader diaries for little sneak peeks on there so go and check us out on instagram now the very first video that I did on the CLA was me going to pick it up. The title of the video was, I've bought the cheapest Mercedes-Benz CLA in the UK. Now that's probably not the case as it stands at the moment. Now one thing I will mention during the repair on the CLA, no corners have been cut. Now what I mean by that is we've used 100% genuine parts. We haven't bought any pattern parts. We've we've overbought parts in the sense of we bought a complete front end when we didn't need a front end. But it turns out it was a blessing in disguise buying that whole front end and I'll go through that shortly. At the time when I bought the CLA, it was the cheapest in the UK. For obvious reasons, it was smashed up. Um, now if you look at this time of filming, undamaged CLAs are going with the mileage that my one's got, it's only done 31,000 miles. It's got, it's got full service history, um, genuine Mercedes-Benz service history. Um, they are going for around 21, 22 grand at the moment from what I've looked online. Now, just bear that price in mind for later on in the video. So we're gonna get into the numbers now. I'm gonna give you guys a breakdown each price and then we'll do a grand total at the end and then what i'm going to do at the end as well is i'm going to go into if it's worth buying categorized cars um for the general public whether it's worth you know getting a car a little bit cheaper that's something that's been in an accident i'll give my opinions on that so the car the hammer price for the cla was eight thousand eight hundred pounds i think we can all agree that is relatively cheap considering what they're going for at the moment so i was very happy with that price eight thousand eight hundred pounds you know it gives you a bit of play to uh to get it fixed um and up to a standard this is a different ball game for me i'm used to sort of buying the two three four grand cars this was something completely new to me i wanted to try it um and experience the the higher end of the the market so higher end of the market for me i mean it's 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 a, a massive amount of money it's a lot of money to to pay for a for a crashed car effectively so eight thousand eight hundred pounds for the car then you had fees on top of that of course which was now I've just combined all the fees together was £813.60. So in total to get the car on the back of my truck, because I drove up there to pick the car up, was £9,613.60. I then charged myself for collection and toll, go and pick the car up. I had to go to Wales. Where did I have to go, was it? Copart. Chester, I think, or that's not Wales, North Wales. Anyway, I charged £112, so I charged £100 fuel. I didn't pay myself a wage, I just covered the fuel and the toll, £112. Before I purchased the front end, I was going to buy all the parts individually, so I did buy um, the lower grills for a new bumper they come to £39.99 uh, it turns out I didn't end up using them so they will be going back up for sale and selling them but at the moment that's what it's cost me so I'm including that into this price if you remember the passenger side uh, the worst part of the bodywork on the side was the passenger's door that had a massive dent in it I managed to get a passenger's door in colour which was a massive help because it means that I didn't have to strip the inside of the door down for the 
paint shop to, to, to paint that. So all that do was blend the outside in because it was an exact match. Passenger door delivered was three hundred and twenty-five pounds. As you can see, it's already adding up. I purchased a complete genuine front end for the CLA. Um, I purchased both headlights. I think they're like LED. Uh, I think front bumper with all the grills, all the plastics. Now that's a key part in why I bought the front end. You know, you can get the front bumper, but you can't get any of the plastic. The all the bumpers come bare, so you end up having to go to Mercedes to, to buy all these little plastics. And you would not believe the amount of plastics behind. The bumper is it's unbelievable. I've never seen so much plastic trim and everything that holds the bumpers together. Um, we got the front support that the headlights um, that holds the headlights into place. We got one of them. We got a crash bar. We've got the lower crash bar. We've got an intercooler. We've got the bonnet. We've got the two wings. We got the um, inner arch liners and. What else? We have a few other bits and bobs. We got a um, the front sensors and the wiring loom for that as well because the wiring loom on the original one, uh, one of the sensors had ripped off, so we did need a, a new loom as well. Come complete with all the plastics. So I paid for a complete front end for the CLA. <sighs> Hurts me to say this, but it was actually a blessing in disguise. Three thousand two hundred and fifty pounds I paid. For a genuine front end that wasn't in color that was a dark blue so i had to get that painted as you've probably seen if you follow me on instagram you'll have seen the the the, the blue front end um but we didn't need the driver's side wing we didn't need the driver's side headlight i haven't sold them bits yet i wanted to keep all the bits until i'd completely finished the car um now the car is completely finished i can now sell that but as it stands at the moment that's what it owes me so I'm, again i'm including that into this price had to apply for a new logbook that was £30. That's standard on any written off car. Um, now, where the front end had been pushed back, um, there was a coolant pipe that was running that was rubbing on the auxiliary belt. Ended up putting a split in the hose pipe, so we did have a coolant leak. So I had to purchase one of them directly from Mercedes Benz and the tow and eye cover for the bumper because the bumper that I bought didn't come with a tow and eye cover cover they come to 58 pounds and 32 pence so then we go on to fitting all the parts onto the car test fitting them everything lined up okay and um, then it went off to the body shop put it onto the recovery truck sent it down to the body shop it was there for a couple of months because there was a backlog and, and then there were some personal issues with with the guy that does my body work so it's there a lot longer than i anticipated but you know, nonetheless, the car has come back in a, a brilliant condition um, and I'm happy with the work that has been done. Um, and also, I'll go into details as to what bodywork I've, I've had done. You know, if you've watched all the videos already, you'll know exactly what I've had done. I had both sides painted. There was some um, filling and pulling on both sides. The rear quarter, passenger side rear quarter was quite bad. Um, it was worse than I originally thought. That had to be pulled and filled quite a bit. Um, the top um, where the rain gutters are the sock between the door and the roof they had to be done because where what happened was the car um, went through a hedge um, I've actually been in contact with the previous owner got a little more information on what actually happened pictures of it after it happened um, and he had the spare key and the micro SD, the SD card for the sat nav. So he kindly sent that over. So big up to you um, for sending that over. I much appreciate that. And um, it's been a massive help. And that will massively help when I come to sell the car. So thank you very much. And I really do appreciate that. Um, so he had the, obviously it went, went through the hedge, the top, uh, a branch, obviously scratched the roof. And not badly. Um, but the sides there was back to metal on the sides but on the roof I managed to polish it out and it did come out um, it did come out so that was I uh, had to have the obviously the front end sprayed um, uh, there was the driver's side skirt which had a scratch in it which at the time didn't realize so that was a 
that was an extra so that he, that was done free of charge because that was done after i got the car back noticed it so sent off that's now been done the body work which i think is a very good price for the amount of work that was involved um comes to 1700 pounds so that was to get the car back up and running um all all parts painted etc now <clears throat> The reason why there's been such a delay since my last video to this video, I normally, you know, you do the last video, put it all back together, then you can get sort of in back into the, you can get straight into the price breakdown. But there was a bonnet malfunction code that kept coming up on the bonnet, um, and I cleared with, with the with the diagnostics, it's still coming up. So there was a fault. Basically, you've got these actuators that when there's a accident, they're like poppers that pop up the bonnet hinges by the windscreen so it's a safety feature you know it pops up the, the 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 hinges the bonnet raises up um so they was pushed back down sometimes they're okay to use again this code code wasn't clearing um so i changed them i ended up having to buy two new ones uh for 109 pounds and 99 pence changed them shut the bonnet and the code had gone so i was so relieved with that um the ambient air temperature sensor outside which basically gives you the, the outside temperature reading that was flagging up uh, the engine code because it was faulty it wasn't given a reading it was giving an incorrect reading so i changed that that got rid of the engine code we cleared the engine code and it hasn't come back on since so touch wood that's all good um and it's reading the um outside temperature spot on now when i put the front end back together I wasn't happy with the front gap um, between the bonnet and the bumper. The wing and the bonnet gaps were fine. Every other gap was fine. It was just that that gap there. And there was a little gap between. It just wasn't sitting right. So what I did was, like I said, I bought the front end headlights bolt into behind the, the, the bumper sort of thing. So changed that um, for the one that I had bought with the front end. Put that back on change the crash bar so basically in effect everything on the front end has been changed i've got a rad pack as well but that was okay i didn't end up having to change any of that that's anything on the front that stayed so i changed that put the bumper back on and it all lines up a1 i'm more than happy with how it lines up you would never know that this car has been in an accident um unless you did obviously a check on it but to the eye it is a, a beautiful car I'm very, very happy. I, I'm, I'm, I hate to blow my own trumpet, but I will do when it's necessary. It has come out spot on, and I'm very proud of how it has come out. Now, we go on to the price. We're not doing this for fun. We're doing it kind of for fun, but there is a, a, a business side to it to try and make some money from it. So, again, like I always say, it's a learning curve. I could have got this car done so much cheaper if I'd have used pattern parts, but I didn't want to go down that route because it's such a nice car, low mileage, it's full service history. I didn't want to just just throw it all together and sell it and try and make as much money as possible. I've got too much of a conscience to, to do that anyway, so it's cost a lot more than what I originally thought. I thought maybe, you know, 13 grand and then make a couple of grand on that <sighs> the price that the car owes me to date is 15,238 pounds and 90 pence yeah it's a lot of money for a categorized car now i'm going to be advertising the car um for I think around the 16 and a half grand mark. I would say that I'm being very ambitious with that. Um, you, you normally need to sort of take 20, 25% off the retail price for a, a categorized car. So 22, say, say 20 grand. So you take four grand off that, five grand off that. So you're sort of looking about 15, so, or 15 and a half. So I'm going to put it up for 16 and a half and see if I get what interest I get and, you know, 
to be honest i think it's worth every single penny because that car is faultless now that car you like i said you would never know that it's been it's been in an accident it's been done to such a professional standard you know i'm proud of how it has come out so going forwards i think i'm just going to sort of stick to the you know four thousand mark around that you know figure with with buying cars because you know it's he's got that sort of money spare he, you know it's hard to, to finance a categorized written off car um it is doable but you pay more on insurance you pay more on repayments on a categorized car so business in the business sense if if i could have got that car done for say twelve thousand pounds be laughing you could make a, a good couple of grand on that but hey ho you don't try you'll never know so we've done it and and i'm very proud of of myself and and that it's how it has come out car's done now that is done now i just want to quickly touch on um buying categorized cars for the likes of me and you we're going out to, to buy our next car is it a good idea to to buy a categorized car now it's a very touchy subject you know it's got such a a bad name you know categorized car you always think it's, it's it's been bodged together and there are many cars out there that have been bodged together but if you've got someone whether it be friend family or a mechanic that knows what they're looking at take them with you have a look you can get some real bargains out there um that have been put back on the road i would definitely look at taking someone with you um getting them to have a proper look around you know check the history on the car check what work's been done um and there is a website called autoauctions.io that you can actually check if you've got the vin number you can type that into the website um, it's not free, you do have to pay for it, but it's well worth it. I think it's like £20, but that's, that is well worth £20 to see if it flags up if it's gone through an auction before. I use it a lot every day or whenever I'm looking at, at cars. I see, you know, because you'll see a car going through the auctions that's been category S and it looks fine. So you type that in, it's gone through the auctions two years before and you can see the actual damage that's that's happened to the car and, and how bad of a condition it is. So if you can get the VIN number, there are probably other free ones, so just have a look at autoauctions.io alternatives. There might be, you know, there might be free ones out there. Have a look, do your homework. You know, take someone that knows what they're looking for. To be honest, it's a, it's a good a car as a, as a, undamaged one in my opinion. So that's just my opinion. You know, everyone's got their own different opinions, but we've done it. The car's finally finished. I think three months after we started it. Like I said, for a lot of that. A lot of that time it's just been sat waiting for bits and pieces body shop um i think overall i've probably spent two days on it that's it in in, in three months so from a business point of view yeah it's not good business but you know i'm not doing this as a business at the moment i'm you know it's just sort of a hobby in my spare time sort of thing but if i was to do it as a business i'd be taking it a lot more a lot more direct approach instead of waiting you know and being so okay with things to being delayed anyway i'm waffling on um i'll put some pictures of it up now so you guys can see the finished products i do very much appreciate the support it's um it's been a good one this 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 rebuild so thank you guys from the bottom of my heart thank you for following along it does mean the world to me and i've got something good coming up very soon good content on the channel so yeah stick around for that like i said if you haven't subscribed already do hit that subscribe button yeah. thank you very much i appreciate everyone's support and head over to instagram to car trader diaries and you'll find us there but until next time